Hi, welcome to this new video. In this video, we'll be creating our enemy attack class and working on the simple enemy AI. So what we're first going to do is go into our enemy character class and we're going to set up when we're going to call this enemy attack because we're going to use it in both the class and the character blueprint itself. So we're going to create this class and it's going to be an act component and it's going to be called enemy attack. And one function we're going to have is check can attack. This is going to check the time since the last attack and its input we're going to have. I'm going to put last attack and it's going to use a float variable. And we're going to have a local variable here called k attack separate. And that's going to be a float. That's going to have a default value of 2. So the reason we're doing that is because we're going to check if it's okay for the player to attack. So we're going to need a branch holding B while pressing left click and we're going to want to check if this last attack was greater than or equal to K attack separate. So this is the separation in time between each attack. If it is true then we're going to want to attack a player. If it's not true then we're going to want to do nothing. So then we're going to create a new function called attack and we're just going to call it on true here. And we're going to need an import named attack target, ATK target, and that's going to be an actor reference. And we're going to get that actor reference from anything that collides with some collision on our character. So we're going to need to add a new collision and we're going to add a sphere collision and we're just going to route this to the character mesh and we're going to scale it up just so it's big enough to cover the entire area around the, the enemy within a nice range and looking at that 3 is a good range because it gives that sort of arm's length between it and the player or you could maybe go to about 3.5 which would be very maximum radius. And this we're not going to call sphere, we're going to call attack radius. And what we're going to want is on component begin overlap we're going to then want to see if we can attack and if we can attack we want to attack this actor if it's the player. So first off we're not going to call a player library or anything for this, we're just going to check if it's a player. And we can do this in our class. So we're going to check if player and the reference is going to be our other actor and it's going to be an actor reference. And we're going to cast to first person character using this. If the cast fails we don't want to do anything if the cast hits, we want to check if we can attack. And in check can attack, we're going to need our character input of other actor or player. And in attack, that will be our target. And I just realized I called if we can check the attack. So the player will now be the attack target. And that is in check can attack. So in check if player, once we overlap, we're going to call check if it's the player. So we're going to cast it to our first person character. And if the cast succeeds, then we're going to want to check if we're able to attack. And we're going to also need to pass the last attack time from the enemy character and plug that into our last attack time. So now we add our component to an enemy character and we'll add enemy attack. On other actor, check if player. And as you can see, it's calling our enemy attack class using our other actor as our other actor there. And our attack time for last attack. So to get the time between last attack, we need to, on every tick, add the time since the last frame. And that is what this delta seconds means. So we need to get our attack time and set our attack time. 
and we need to do float, add float, and we need to add these two together. And this is going to keep going up and up and up until they do manage to attack. So now we've created a simple attack class for our enemy character where every frame we're going to check how long since they've last attacked and once we do get an enemy within the radius we're going to attack that player by checking if it is the player calling our class in the attack class. If it is the player we're going to check if we can attack using how long it's been since that last attack and if we can attack then we will attack the player. And that's going to be something we need to set up with the player library. So if we go back to our library and player library, you can see we have the damage player. So in enemy attack, without including any classes, any components, we can look for damage player. And you'll see it's calling the player library class. So we don't actually need that attack target. What we do need, however, is damage. So we're going to need to pass that. Unless we do have a constant damage. So I'm going to call this I damage and this one's going to be an integer. So I'm showing you the different ways you can do it here. So you could have it so you can pass from this enemy the damage they can inflict all the way through these until we attack the player or you can use a local variable, store it in there and we'll say about 40 and inflict that to the player. If you go and for sort of a survival thing, enemies tend to do the same damage and so this way we can just use that. However, you're going to have varied damage, you can just pass it through as a parameter. So now we're saying once the player is in range we can attack it. However, when we want to end the overlap, we want the character to be no longer attacking. In the next video we'll look at how to end the attack when the player is no longer in the radius or how to keep attacking when the player is in the radius and then we'll look at our pathfinding for the AI. So I hope you enjoyed the video and stick around for that episode. Thank you.